And the first two episodes of Kenobi, or I guess Obi-Wan Kenobi, are out, and I have a lot of thoughts. Overall, my first few thoughts on the first two episodes would be that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed them. I really, I'd say I loved the first episode. I thought the episode did a really great job with a bunch of things I'm about to get into. The second episode wasn't as great as the first one. I think the the second episode was just good. It was fine. There was a few things I didn't really like, but nothing too big. But anyways, I have a lot of thoughts, mostly positive. There's a lot of things I really love in this series, so let's talk about them. As I stated in one of my previous videos that I made a few days ago, what I really wanted from this series was to focus on Obi-Wan's trauma. I wanted to get a deeper dive into some of his regrets. Does he miss Anakin? How does he feel about what went down? I wanted them to focus more on that, you know, him being depressed a bit, maybe him being angry towards the Jedi in some way. And we got a lot of that in the first, especially in the first episode and a little bit in the second. But easily my biggest praise about this whole episode or these first two episodes so far was the focus on Obi-Wan's trauma. I mean, we begin, for one, I I loved the opening. You know, it's weird. I'm not the biggest prequel fan, but the way they opened with a behind the scenes, I was I was like, yeah, like, or not behind the scenes, they previously on when they showed like the prequels, I was like, yes. It's funny, right before the episode started, I was like, they should do a previously on where they just show the prequels, and they did that. And they focused a lot on Obi-Wan and his relationship with Anakin. Because that's something I I think they missed. They didn't uh capitalize on enough was Obi-Wan's trauma with Anakin turning to the dark side in Revenge of the Sith. And we got that here, and I really love that. He has these dreams of Anakin, right? You know, he's sleeping, and he wakes up. He's dreaming about the events of Revenge of the Sith. He even sees, like, little Anakin, which is pretty cool. I absolutely love that. Because it goes back to a quote. It's one of my favorite quotes from Star Wars, and it's from Bill Burr's character, Biggs Mayfeld, in Chapter 15 of The Mandalorian, when he says something along the lines of, uh, as long as you can sleep well at night, you're doing better than most. And I was like, what if they kind of tied that into here with Obi-Wan? And they did that perfectly. Obi-Wan's having these nightmares about Anakin. He wakes up and, you know, he sits down, you know, leans forward. And it's like, yeah, he doesn't sleep well at night because he's he's dealing with trauma from the previous or from the prequel trilogy. And I love that. I just I instantly thought of that quote from Bill Burr's character. And I, I love that. I loved seeing the dreams from Anakin. Calling out to Qui-Gon is really interesting. I do like how they tied that into what happened at the end of Revenge of the Sith when Yoda was talking about more training I have for you. So, I mean, the setup here is pretty clear. We're going to see Qui-Gon, which I'm really happy about. I hope, though, my my big hope is that when Qui-Gon does show up, because he's pretty much going to show up now. You you set it up, there's going to be payoff. When Qui-Gon shows up, I hope he's just there to give advice to Obi-Wan. I don't want him to interact with like Qui- or with uh, Vader slash Anakin or help in any way. He should just give advice to Obi-Wan and leave. Now, that would be pretty cool. I must That would be so sick for just Ewan to be nostalgic, you know, acting alongside, alongside Liam Neeson again. That would be so cool for him. But seeing Qui-Gon again is very interesting. This is just the acting of Ewan McGregor, but I really liked it. We got that little scene from, it was like one of the trailers, or they released it early, where Obi-Wan's asking uh, Obi-Wan, oh, and he's like, how's the boy doing? He needs to be trained, and Owen's like, just like you trained his father. There's just something about the way it was acted here where... Obi-Wan just seemed really depressed in a way. He, you can tell he really cares about Luke. But when he was like, is he okay, you know? It's just like, Obi-Wan doesn't have much. You know, we see his day-to-day job. He's a butcher. He's saving a little bit of meat for whatever his camel was called, the species. I don't know what it is. But it's just like these minute things that they focus on. And I just really get the vibe that Obi-Wan's depressed. And I like that. He seems he has lost hope. Uh, which is going to tie into the next point. Well, first, I just want to talk about Owen. I liked, I, I like the characterization they gave him here. This is one thing I didn't like, but I'll touch on that later on in the video. But I like how Obi Wan or Owen's kind of a jerk. He's like, he's looking out for Luke, and he kind of realizes what's best for Luke is to not have Luke become a Jedi. And in a way, he's not wrong. I mean, along the way of Luke becoming a Jedi, he did almost lose his, lose his life plenty of times. So. I get that, but I like that dynamic there, and I like how Owen didn't rat out Obi-Wan too. It shows that Owen's a good guy at the end of the day. Now, one thing I really liked was when I think the Jedi's name was Nari shows up, and he tells Obi-Wan, he's like, I've been looking for you, you know, let's restart the order. I was, I wish they kind of explained a little bit how he managed to find Obi-Wan, 
Because they just, I mean, how does some people know to just go to Tatooine and find Obi-Wan, right? But whatever, I guess that's fine. But I liked, I liked Obi-Wan's response. He's like, no, leave. You know, the Jedi are over. No, go away. Kind of reminded me of Luke in The Last Jedi a little bit. But it, it makes sense because, and this is what they tie into later on. I'm kind of jumping around points, but... It kind of goes back to when Bale shows up and he's like, listen, Leia needs your help. And Obi-Wan's like, no, like, I'm not the guy for that. At first, I was a little thrown back. I was like, would Obi-Wan really do that? But it, they made it such a smart decision because it was a human decision. And this was, there was a lot of things I expected that I really liked. But what I loved seeing here was Obi-Wan's hesitancy to go on this mission. And Bale kind of calls him out on it. He's like, there's something else. There's another reason why you don't want to do this. You know, you might have failed Anakin, you know, Anakin turn to the dark side, but don't fail Leia too. And I like how Obi-Wan's struggling with that. Obi-Wan failed and he, just from that sequence, you can tell he blames himself. He blames himself for the fall of Anakin. And again, that just adds on to the trauma, which makes the ending of the epi second episode really powerful. So kind of moving on to the second episode in just regards to Obi-Wan. It was such a small moment, but I loved how they ran into a clone trooper and he, uh, the clone that was asking for money, and Obi-Wan's like kind of scared and just walks away. It, it com this completely slipped my mind at first and took me like a minute after when I, when I watched it, I was just like, oh, Obi-Wan used to know these clones. He probably, you know, loves them and feels, he, he just feels more sympathy towards this one clone because he loved the clone so much. And then a minute later, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. These are the clones that just tried to, they could try to kill Obi-Wan. Uh, in Revenge of the Sith, so he's probably, like, really traumatized by that. It was a small moment. It was very small. And no, that's not Rex. For one, Rex is on his own planet, um, on that sand planet in Rebels with um, Gregor and... Oh, I can't believe I remember the other guy. Wolf? Wolf and Gregor. Rex is there, so that 501st guy wasn't Rex, but he was in the 501st. And I was just like, oh, yeah, Obi-Wan's scared of these guys. He should be. And I love that moment. Just a little bit more, like, trauma. More inciting... Uh, fear in Obi-Wan, and that's what I want to see in the series. So that's kind of all my praises I have for Obi-Wan as a character. I think they did a really great job with showing his trauma and little things that just can that add so many layers to the character more, because this isn't really the same Obi-Wan that we saw in Episode 3 or Episode 4. He's wrestling with what happened in Episode 3, and we ha he hasn't come to terms with that, and I really love what they did with him. All right, the other positives, I, I love seeing Leia. I did not expect that. I, I kind of did a little, but sh she's a prominent role. In a way, she's kind of the second main character of the Obi-Wan series, and I didn't really see that coming. I like how they focused on her and not Luke so much. I feel like Luke would always get more of the focus, so I'm glad they're showing Leia here. And they just did a great job with Leia. At first, you know, when they cast the younger actors, you're like, is that really the the character? But here, it, they I don't know what this actress's name is, this 10-year-old girl, but she did a great job of nailing Leia. I was, a little, I was a little nervous at first because I feel like there's a lot of ways you can screw up trying to be Leia, but just like the sass, you know, the care, you know, there's like the little things where she was um, thanking the droids, like that's Leia, she's a caring person, but she's also sassy, and when she was captured and she's like, I'm not scared of you, she's like, I'm not scared of you, that's Leia, and I love that, they did Leia really well here, and her, her banter with Obi-Wan was a lot of fun. She's, oh, this this ties into something that really made me happy. As you guys know, I'm a fan of the sequel trilogy. And when Leia was like, what's your name? He's like, Ben. And she's like, Ben's not a Jedi name. You guys know that that that, that was a tie into Ben Solo. I, I just got the vibe. It was just like, oh, you know, Ben's not a Jedi name. Maybe that's why she named her son Ben. Because he's not, he's more than a Jedi to her. I don't know. I'm just glad they they had a moment there. It's not like a sequel trilogy connection, but they had the moment there where Leia acknowledged the name Ben because it's, it's a good point when you bring up the sequels, you know. Why would Leia name her son Ben? She never met him, at least at the time, that's what we thought. She never met Ben, and even though Obi-Wan saved Luke and Han, there's like a lot of other people did too. So of all people, why pick Ben Kenobi? But this show actually provides more context to that. Ben Kenobi saved her the one time he got kidnapped and risked a lot to save Leia. So yeah, I don't know, just the focus on the name Ben in regards to Leia recognizing that name just made me really happy. Also, her relationship with Bale was really touching. I had a strong feeling we would probably see Bale considering he's the only other person that knows Obi-Wan's alive. And I don't know, her, Leia and her conversations with Bale, especially when Bale was like, you are a real Organa, you know, it doesn't matter that you're adopted. 
We also saw C-3PO for a second, but mm, that's that's fine. It doesn't really bother me. I don't know. I, I like, again, Star Wars is mostly about family, right? So even though it was a little moment between Bale and Leia, I liked seeing that their connection, their love, and how much love he really had for her. And when he was like, uh, you know, one day you will lead this planet. And I was just like, oh, man. You know, we're actually seeing Alderaan here, so we have a real connection to it. It's a shame what happens to Alderaan, but that's the story. So these last two episodes end with uh, Obi-Wan finding out that Vader is alive. And that was something I really wanted to see. And, and I think they did a good job at it. You know, there's a lot of people complaining that, oh, Obi-Wan finding that Vader slash Anakin is still alive through Reva feels off. But I'm like, in, in what way do you want Obi-Wan to find out? Obi-Wan finding out that Anakin is still alive shouldn't be a, realistically, shouldn't be a grand thing that happens, you know? It, he should just hear the name Vader and then realize he's still alive. So when Obi-Wan was just sitting there and he's like, Anakin... And then it switches to Vader, Anakin in the t in the back to suit, and he like realizes. I guess I'm assuming Vader just had a connection, and realized Obi Wan is still alive. I got chills, man. I got chills. Just like I don't know, seeing Vader in that like that looked really good, and I, I loved Ewan's acting. You know, again, this Anakin was his brother. He should be heartbroken in a way. In a way, he should be glad that Anakin is still alive, but he should also be heartbroken that Vader is still alive. And I think Ewan did a great job at portraying that. So those are pretty much the things I loved about the first two episodes. Pretty much everything with Obi-Wan and mostly with Leia, I really enjoyed. I think they did a great job characterizing Obi-Wan. At the end of the day, that's the most important thing. What was I not too fond of? There was nothing I like really hated in this. There was just a few things I didn't like. Reva is a fine character. I can tell she's going to annoy a lot of people. As of right now, she's okay. I don't really hate her. She doesn't bug me. But there's a few minor things she did I, I didn't really like. Like when she targeted Owen of all people and she's like, I'm going to threaten your family. It's like, okay, of course, like the one person she has to pick out is Owen and threaten his family. It just felt a little bit too much of a coincidence for me. But I got I get the point of the scene. It was trying to show she's a little reckless and the Grand Inquisitor and uh, the fifth brother see that as well. Also in the second episode, there there's a trope just that's done really often that I really don't like. It's when a kid or a child does something really stupid, and the point of the scene is that, oh, they're a child, of course they're going to do this stupid thing. That trope really bugs me. Like, Leia here is running away from Obi-Wan. Like, as the viewer, we're getting frustrated because we know that Obi-Wan has her best interests in mind. And yeah, we can say, of course, she's a kid, we get it. But it's I don't think it's good storytelling. I don't, I don't like seeing that trope of the kid acting, doing stupid things because they're a kid. Wasn't a big deal, but it did frustrate me a little bit. And then the last two things, how Reva knows that Anakin is Vader. There's like, there's two very sacred things for me in Star Wars. It's that almost no one knows that Anakin is Darth Vader. And almost no one knows that uh, Vader has kids out there that are alive. So Reva just knowing who Anakin is, I, I think they're going to set up something. You know, she said she read the archives and she's obsessed with Obi-Wan. So maybe somehow, you know, she puts two and two together that Anakin is Darth Vader. Not the biggest fan of that. It's probably the thing I dislike the most about these first two episodes. I know they're going to explain it, but just the concept of someone else knowing besides, you know, these core group of people, I'm not a big fan of. Also, you know, she killed the Grand Inquisitor. That In my stream, I was just like, whoa, did that, did that actually happen? He's probably not dead. I saw some people making comments like, oh, is this secretly a clone? Are they secretly going to do something else? I don't think so. I think they're probably just going to put the Grand Inquisitor in a back to tank. But I mean, the guy got stabbed through the stomach and laid down. There's no way they're just going to shoot up wreck on it and say that they took the design of the Grand Inquisitor from Rebels with the teeth and everything. They fixed the teeth and eyes, which, thank God, he looks much better. There's no way they're going to take that from Rebels and just completely retcon where the character is from. So they're, they're going to do something that he's probably just alive and chilling. Maybe use the dark side to survive because, you know, apparently people can do that. <coughs> Darth Maul. So that's probably what's going to happen. But it just seemed a little unnecessary. I kind of get what they were going for. You know, Reva has the tension with the other Inquisitors. But it still wasn't a great moment. So over, overall, if I had to give final scores to the episodes, I would give the first episode a 9 out of 10. The characterization of Obi-Wan was done really well, and the characterization of Leia was also done really well, especially her sassy attitude towards the pirates. You know, she's like, I'm not scared of you. I loved that. To me, that's what Leia is. I actually even cheered up a little bit, you know, seeing Leia just like, oh, this is this is Leia. 
the the actress did a great job. The writers did a great job with that. I would give the second episode maybe a seven out of ten. There there were more things I didn't like in that episode, but they still did a good job of continuing the characterization of Obi Wan, characterization of Leia. I really liked the banter between Leia and Obi Wan. I thought they did great. But there's a bunch of minor things like why does Reva know who Anakin is, um, the Grand Inquisitor getting killed or whatever. That those are weird things, but not too big. They brought the my final score down in chapter two a little bit, but it's not gonna be a like big deal. I'm I'm still really enjoying the series, and we're gonna get Vader soon, so that'll be pretty cool. So those are my final quick thoughts on the first two episodes. I do I'm gonna make some breakdowns or analysis videos. I don't know what to call it, but. I got some more in-depth videos coming, and I can't wait to show you those. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching another one of my videos. Don't forget to join the Claude Squad, and I will see you guys next time.